hello students welcome to another video on maths for class 8 today we will be continuing with the chapter squares and square roots today I'm going to talk about some interesting patterns if you remember last time I had told you about the different properties that we were using to find out a number is a perfect square or not so when we are talking of some interesting patterns the first one that I would like to discuss is adding triangular numbers now what are triangular numbers the numbers whose dot patterns can be arranged as triangles are called the triangular numbers now you can see I have put some marks here like this is 1 then this is 3 then in a triangle 6 10 and so on it's increasing and this is a pattern of that triangular number so for finding out the nth triangular number you can use the formula n into n plus 1 by 2 for example if I want to make the triangle with two numbers so 2 into 2 plus 1 that is 2 plus 1 will be 3 3 into 2 will be 6 6 by 2 will be 3 so if I'm using three dots I'm getting this kind of a triangle if I change the value of n I can calculate the nth triangular number using the formula n into n plus 1 by 2 and if we combine these two consecutive triangular numbers we will get a square number for example if you see 1 plus 3 that is 4 it is a square of 2 if you see 3 plus 6 two consecutive triangular numbers so 3 plus 6 is 9 that is a square of 3 6 plus 10 that is 16 it is a square of 4 our next pattern is the numbers between the consecutive square numbers if two square numbers are given how many numbers are there in between them how to find so if you see here 1 is the square of 1 if we have 2 3 4 4 square is 2 square so if you see the difference between 1 and 2 square is how many numbers here 2 similarly 3 square that is 9 so between 2 square and 3 square what are the numbers 5 6 7 and 8 similarly 3 square and 4 square what is the number between them 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 so you can see that there are two and non square numbers between the squares of the two consecutive numbers so when any number is given suppose n and n plus 1 so how many non square numbers are there between them 2 into n so these are some simple numbers ways formulas that you need to remember to solve the questions now next is adding the odd numbers you can observe a pattern here also like if it is 1 1 is same as 1 squared if I add 1 plus 3 two odd numbers it is 4 which is 2 squared if I add 1 plus 3 plus 5 I get 9 which is 3 squared so do you observe a pattern the number of n odd numbers is equal to n squared so if we observe here that the sum of the first n natural numbers odd natural number is n squared so here it is 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 that is 4 numbers are there so what will be the sum of it 4 squared so for example if I tell you 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 so how many numbers are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 so this total of this will be equal to 36 now here you also can see a point that I have mentioned that if a natural number cannot be expressed as a sum of successive odd natural numbers starting with 1 then it is not a perfect square for example if I take a number 29 you know that this is not a perfect square right but how do we prove it we'll start subtracting all the odd numbers one by one from it till we get a zero if we get a zero then we can say that it is a perfect square but when we don't get a zero it is not a perfect square so 29 minus 1 is 28 now then next step will be 28 minus 3 only odd numbers 25 then 25 minus 5 20 20 minus 7 13 13 minus 9 4 4 minus 11 that is minus 7 so you saw that 
we are not reaching 0. We are directly coming to minus 7. So I can say that 29 is not a perfect square because it cannot be expressed as the sum of the consecutive odd natural numbers starting with 1. Now moving to the next interesting point that is square of the odd numbers can be expressed as a sum of consecutive numbers. Now I've shown some examples. Suppose 3 squared is 9. We can express 9 as 4 plus 5 to consecutive number. Now this is this is for squares of odd numbers only remember. So 5 squared is 25 we can express as that 12 plus 30. Similarly, 7 squared is 49. We can express it as 24 plus 25. So how can you know that? Here I have also shown, like suppose you know that 3 squared is 9. So how am I getting 4 and 5? It is the number that is 3 here. 3 squared minus 1 by 2 and 3 squared plus 1 by 2. So when I do 3 squared 9 minus 1 by 2, I get 4. And 3 squared plus 1, that is 9 plus 1 by 2 is 5. Similarly, you can check it for any odd number you can do the square get the sum you can represent the square of the odd number as the sum of the two consecutive numbers we can express the square of any odd number greater than one as the sum of the two consecutive natural number i'll show you one more example so if i take 11 square then you know it is 121 so how can i break it you can try this that is 11 squared minus 1 by 2 that is 121 minus 1 that is 120 by 2 is 60 so obviously the other one will be 61 because here if we get 11 squared plus 1 by 2 then I'll get 120, 122 by 2 that is 61 so the square of the odd number is equal to the sum of two consecutive numbers next is finding the square of a number using the identities now you have done the algebraic identities i have taught you in the previous videos you can also go and check them out if you don't know so how can i find the square of a number using this identity for example if i want to find for 21 i want to do 21 square i can break it into 20 plus 1 so it becomes in the form of a plus b so if you remember a square plus 2 into a b plus b square so just break it up in a plus b whole square formula which is a square plus 2ab plus b square. So that is 400 plus 40 plus 1 that is 441. So 21 square is 441. So using the identities I can also get the square without actually having to multiply the numbers. Now one more easy fact interesting fact that you can remember is when we are having to do the square of a number in which the unit digit is a 5 so if it is taken as a5 a5 to the power square we can do a into a plus 1 hundreds plus 25 i can explain with one example suppose the number is 125 square so how can you do it now you see whatever number except that last unit's digit is taken as a so here a is how much 12 here nothing is there means it is going to be multiplied with 12 plus 1 a plus 1 100 means that is 100 plus 25 always because 5 is there it is going to be 25 so 12 into 13 into 100 plus 25 15,000 600 plus 25 that is 15625 so whenever we have a number with the unit digit is 5 you can go for a into a plus 1 so leaving that unit digit as 5 whatever is remaining that becomes your a a into a plus 1 hundreds plus 25 so you can easily solve the value and get the answer now moving to another very interesting topic that is the pythagorean triplet now three natural numbers we can call them a pythagorean triplet if the three number m and p are in the form of m squared plus n squared equal to p squared and for this you, you need to remember that the value of m should be greater than 1 and we can also get the numbers as 2m whole squared plus m squared minus 1 whole squared equal to m squared plus 1 whole squared and the three triplets can be 2m m squared minus 1 m squared plus 1 now 
I know you might be feeling a little confused. So when I show you an example, you will understand what I mean. Suppose we have to write the Pythagorean triplet whose smallest number is given to us as 8. Suppose the smallest number of the Pythagorean triplet is 8. Means out of the three numbers, the value of this equation if I say 2m m square minus 1 and m square plus 1, you remember this. So let us assume that 2m is equal to 8. So you can easily get the value of m that is 8 by 2, 4. So now you can also get the other two values. How? You know 4 square minus 1 and 4 square plus 1 that is 16 minus 1 is 15, 16 plus 1 is 7. So what are the Pythagorean triplets here? It is 8, 15 and 17. So this is a triplet in which if you do m square plus n square you are going to get the p square. If I treat this as m, n and p. Now let us move to solving some questions so that you get the understanding of all these points that I just discussed with you. Without adding, find the sum of 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11. So you know that when we have the odd numbers, we just have to count how many numbers are there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 square is going to give me the sum of this. Without actual addition, I can get the sum of this as 36. Right? You just have to mention whichever property or pattern that you have read. Like here what we are doing, we are adding the sum of first n natural number. So n can be any number here, n is 6. So we are doing 6 square to get the num sum of this pattern. Similarly, express 64 as a sum of 8 odd numbers. Now 64 is a square of which number? 8 square. So we have to represent it as a sum of 8 odd numbers. So we do it 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. 4 numbers gone. 9 plus 11 plus 13 plus 15. So it becomes a sum of 8 odd numbers to give me 64. Without calculation we are able to get these answers. Moving to the next question where we have to express 19 squared as a sum of the two consecutive integers so you know how can i get the square of this two number i can go for the 19 square minus 1 by 2 and 19 square plus 1 by 2 and 361 plus 1 by 2 that is 1 will be 180 and the other one will be obviously 181 so my answer is 180 and 181 which can be represented to show the 19 squared now find the square of 42 without actual multiplication so i told you we can use identity so i can write 40 plus 2 whole square so here we are just putting the a plus b whole square formula where a is the first number and b is the second number and solving it that's 1600 plus 160 plus 4 4 6 so the answer is 1764 the next question is write a Pythagorean triplet whose one number is 63 so you know that the Pythagorean triplets are the numbers where m squared plus n squared equal to p squared and how we can get the three numbers 2m m squared minus 1 and m squared plus 1 so out of these here it is not telling me which one it is. So let me assume that let m square plus 1 is equal to 63. So I can get m square equal to 63 plus 1, right? I transfer that 1 here. So m is 64 root over because square is there we need to do the root. So that is value of m is 8. So if I want to find out, so the triplet will be 2 into 8 that is 16. The second number already we have written 63 and the third number number will be 8 square plus 1 that is 60. 8 square is 64 plus 1 is 65. So this is our Pythagorean triplet. Now moving to the last question in which we have to observe the pattern and find the missing numbers. So here you can see that 7 square is 49 and then we have 67. And as you can observe in the pattern, the number of 6 are increasing. Here it is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And also here if you see 4 and 9 is fixed. 
but if one six was there we put a 48 if two six are there we put two four and two eight if three six are there we put three four and three eight in between so if we have here four six so in between this we have to put four times four and four times eight so one two three four similarly the last number here six is there five times so I don't have to count this four I have to put four five times now one two three four five so I put five times and a should be also five times so here already one eight is there two three four and five times eight is there and the last number will be fixed that is nine so by seeing the pattern I'm able to find out the value of the numbers in the missing places so with this I'm very sure students you have got the idea of different patterns interesting patterns and how without actually solving them we can get the numbers i would really appreciate if you like and comment on the video thank you for watching